Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Germany once again and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel once before. So the last beer that I had from these guys was pretty nice. I saw that they'd released another one through System Bolaga and I just kind of thought, well, why not? And the one that we're going to have a look at today is a style that we don't get to review all that many of here on the channel. So fingers crossed it's another good beer. I'm a huge fan of my traditional German beers, as you'll know if you've watched the channel for any length of time and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to a little place called Teisendorf in southeastern Bavaria in the south of Germany and we're going to have a look at my second beer from Privatbrauerei MC Wieninger. So this particular beer is their Maibock. It comes in at 7.1% ABV and I think you know what style this one is. So yeah, this beer was released through System Bolaget here in Sweden on the 11th of May 2021 as part of their to failing to temporary sortiment and the last beer that I had from this brewery was the Zwickel which I thought was very nice. So yeah, very curious to see how they do a Maibock of course. The Maibocks tend to be a slightly more kind of oily kind of amber lager in, uh, in my experience. But um, yeah, curious to see how it turns out. Fingers crossed it's another good beer. And as I said a second ago, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. Nice to return to this brewery quite quickly after the last review also. So um, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Privat by MC Beininger, and hopefully we can add some more to that list at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the german beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity but not as often as i would like of course and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes now to tell you a little bit about Privat Brauerei Wieninger. So, um, this brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in a little place called Teisendorf in southeastern Bavaria, which is just to the northwest of Berchtesgaden, which is right in the corner, actually, and it's very close to Salzburg in Austria. But documents mention a brewery in Teisendorf around the year 1600, and apparently this brewery was taken into the Archbishopdom of Salzburg back in 1666, owing to disputes between them and the owners. But uh, the brewery continued to exist, over the, the following centuries, but then in 1813, following the secularisation that took place in Europe at that time, the brewery was bought by Philip Wieninger from Trautmannsdorf. So his son, Max Christian, took over the brewery and the official name of the brewery can be traced back to him, MC, Max Christian. But the company has since passed through seven generations of this family and over the generations it's become a little bit, the family has become somewhat of a brewing dynasty with various different breweries in different parts of Germany. They've got breweries and restaurants in places such as Wilshoven, Dachau, uh, Fürstenzell, Pilsting and also in Munich itself. But today the company is managed by Christian Weininger and Andreas Brugmann. But the current brewmaster is Bernard Leuve and they produce around 100,000 hectolitres of beer per year. And as of June 2021, when I'm producing this video for you, they've produced around 65 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. Uh, it seems that they are a kind of traditional German brewery, um, so there's lots of different things in there. There's Helles, Dunkels, Pilsners, um, all of these kind of traditional uh, German type beers. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Privat Brauerei MC Wieninger. Uh, I remember when I made the notes for the last video, it was actually quite hard to get uh, a decent amount of information on this brewery, but you do find that fairly often with some of these uh, very small German companies actually, and not a lot of them are, um, you know, are on social media and things, so it can be very, very difficult to get information on these um, on these different breweries, even if you, you know, message them through Facebook and Instagram and stuff like this. But um, yeah, that's all I could really give uh, give you at the moment. But uh, the southeast, the very southeastern part of Germany, is somewhere that I've not really explored. I would love to go and see Berchtesgaden and that sort of area around there. I'd love to go back to Austria as well because I don't really remember uh, much of Austria. I think I was only like six or seven 
when I, I was there the the only time I've been there actually so I'd love to go back and see yeah very southeastern Bavaria or that you know very southern border of Germany with Switzerland and then into Austria that would be uh, pretty awesome so maybe that's something fingers crossed that we can do in the uh, in the future but um yeah as i say that's all i have for the for the moment for you on the history side of things let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself so as you can see this beer is a half liter bottle which is standard for germany um this one cost me 20 i think it was 30 swedish kroner so roughly about three euros for the bottle and um, usually when it comes to an import beer yeah you will add on about 10 kroners or one euro because it's an import beer and the import company has to uh, get a little cut of course so um yeah i guess probably in the local area you would pay about a euro or a euro 20 something like that for it but yeah 30 kroners that translates to three euros roughly and i guess about two pounds you know it's about two pounds 75 sterling something like that just so that those of you watching in different parts of the world have a little bit of a, a price reference probably about somewhere in the region of three dollars uh, fifty american but yeah um very nicely presented of course there you can see the uh Wieninger symbol on this one you can also see that that's on the top label i, lo I love the top labels that you get on these um on these german beers and there you can also see the bottle cap i think i've got um, so I actually don't know what way up that's meant to be. It's quite quite unusual that actually, but um, yeah, very very nicely presented. You can see it's sixteen sixty six. So he'll say it in plus a thousand basically. But uh, yeah, you can also see the Bayerische State Crest on this one, the Bavarian State Crest. So as I've explained to you in uh, previous videos, the story of the Bock is quite an interesting one. So the Bock beers originate in Einbeck which I believe, I forget which Saxony state that's in in Germany, if it's maybe Saxon Anhalt. Um, but um, yeah, the Bock, uh, the Einbeckers basically took their beers down to Munich and um, they asked, you know, the Münchners asked them, oh, what kind of beer is this? And they said, oh, it's a, it's a you know, Einbeck beer. And then apparently the Münchners made fun of the Einbeckers accent because they thought they were saying Bock. Bock, of course, in German means goat. And that's why on a lot of the Bock beers you will find um, goats on them. It's basically, you know, the Münchners making fun of the Einbecker uh, accent, if you like. But um, yeah, the Maybach is a kind of interesting one. I've had a couple of these beers, not all that many of them, but for me, the Maybach tends to be, um, th these are also known as Lentebox, actually, but these beers tend to be quite, um, you know, sort of oily, uh, you know, kind of oily, biscuity type uh, lager beers, actually. They're basically amber lagers in a sense, but they're a wee bit different from the um, from the Mertzens. I always find the Mertzens are slightly more kind of biscuity in a sense, whereas the, the Maybox tend to be a little bit more sort of oily, actually. But they are lager beers. Remember, the definition of lager is cold temperature fermentation, bottom fermenting yeast. Usually they ferment between 8 to 12 degrees Celsius. But um, yeah, I think we can get this guy out now and get on with the tasting. Now, a 7.1% Maybach, this one. So a wee bit stronger, but I think you know, it should be um, quite a nice beer. So let's go for it then and get this guy out and into the glass. There we go. Oh, it's actually quite a light um, beer, this one. So yeah, there are quite a few different types of Bach beer. You know, you've got the regular single Bach, you've got the Maybach, the Hellerbach as well. The, we mentioned the Lentebock, although the Lentebock is kind of similar. I'm just thinking if I missed anything. You know, you've got Weizenbock as the other one as well. But um, yeah, basically a Bock beer tends to be, as I say, a little bit more of a kind of oily, biscuity. Uh, it, used, it always tends to have a little bit more of a kind of oily, biscuity uh, type flavour profile, in my experience. But um, yeah, as you can see, this one has poured quite nicely. So, um, first off, I'm going to say the colour of this one is a little bit lighter than I would have expected. But before the head disappears, we'll say that it's poured with just over a finger of a frothy. I would say, I don't think that's quite perfect for you. I think that is a kind of, you know, sort of creamy coloured head that we're getting on this one. It is a little bit more creamy than it is perfect white. But as you can see, this beer has poured a lovely kind of bright golden straw yellow color it's crystal clear you can see from me putting my fingers behind the glass in this one there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and a few going up towards the bottom of the head but i mean overall it does look um pretty damn nice actually um but yeah as i say um for a mybok a little bit lighter than i might have expected in terms of color i maybe would have expected it to have a little you know a slightly more kind of caramelly um sort of coppery tint to it to be honest with you but you know that's 
it just it varies from beer to beer, I guess. So yeah. So remember, in terms of the colour of your beer, it's determined by one, the type of malts that you use. That usually determines the magnitude of the colour. Um, and then the length of your wort boil will also play a role as well, because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. And adjuncts and uh, barrel ageing, of course, are going to affect it as well. But those two factors are certainly not at play in this beer. And my bock, I think, is probably going to undergo a boil of like, you know, somewhere between 60 and, uh, and 90 minutes, which is, is fairly standard. And then, of course, you've got your cold temperature fermentation. But um, yeah, as I say, a little bit lighter than I would have expected of a Maybach. Let me know your own thoughts on that in the comment section below. I've not reviewed too many of these beers right enough. Um, but yeah, I think this one is just a little touch lighter than I've seen from uh, from other Maybachs in the past. But um, yeah, in terms of appearance, it looks very, very nice. Uh, let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. That is um, that is pretty damn nice, actually. Um, these German beers, I always say this, um, they've just got such a distinctive uh, aroma to them. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of these. I got into craft beer through the uh, the Bamberg Rauch beers, the likes of Schlenkela and things like that. And then when I actually went to live in Germany in Heidelberg, then I got into the Helles and the other things. Um, around there as well. So I do love a good German lager. My friend Peter, uh, the clueless drinker, he lived in uh, Regensburg in, uh, in Bavaria and you know he's a big fan of these kind of lager beers as well. I love these. There's just something, you know, these kind of, these German malts are so distinctive and I know the Hallertown Tittenanger hops as well. I just, you know, I love them. I always feel a little, pardon me, I always feel a little bit nostalgic when I uh, have a go at one of these German beers. But yeah, it smells absolutely lovely. Um, so yeah, first and foremost with this one, you get that you know kind of typical bready base to it. You've got that very distinctive almost, I don't know if it's kind of a Munich malt in this one, but you've got a lovely white bready character to it. It comes across as quite crisp in a sense as well. There's one or two little bread crusty elements in there. Um, yeah. As I say, um, it is quite a bready beer. I have to say, if I was given this blind in terms of the aroma, I would probably just think this was a Hellas. I don't know if I'd really be able to distinguish it as a, a Maybach in particular. But as I say, I've not reviewed too many of this particular style of beer. Um, but yeah, to me, it's got that typical, almost Hellas-like base to it. So as I say, soft white bread. It's got an element of crispness to it in there. Bit of a um, bit of a bread crusty note. Um, when you sugar it up a little bit, you can smell a wee bit more of a kind of biscuity quality coming out of this one. But like I say, I don't think this is the most oily and most kind of biscuity um, beer that I've come across within the Maybach category. You do get a little bit of that typical McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing out of this one. Um, so a wee bit of a kind of sweet, more oily kind of character to it. A little bit of a kind of biscuity, grainy sort of thing, as I say. Um, but yeah, that's kind of everything you would expect from this style. As I say, just not quite as oily. It comes across as a little bit more crisp in the um, in the aroma, this one, I would say. But you have to remember, when this beer is 7.1%, which, which isn't unheard of, of course, for um, for a Maybach beer, um, you will get a little bit more kind of... Um, that's one of the reasons why this style has a little bit more of a kind of biscuity, brown, sugary element to it, is to kind of cover the booziness. Quite often alcohol flavours come out as a slightly biscuity, brown, sugary type thing. So you do get a little bit of that in this beer, but this one really does lean towards the kind of bready, bread crusty end of the spectrum. And I would say that on that, it is like a sort of crisp white bread that dominates the, um, the aroma in this one. There's potentially one or two little you know, there's potentially one or two little kind of woody undertones to the beer, but um, overall, uh, you know, overall it is quite, um, uh, you know, it's pretty kind of straight shooting in that sense. So I like it. I do like how it, um, how how it goes about its business from that side of things. But um, yeah, the the malt base on this one is. It's pretty nice, very authentically German. As I say, I think I would struggle to recognise this as a Maybach. I would probably think it was a Hellas. But um, on the um, hoppy side of things, again, it's kind of what you'd expect. It's using, I suspect it's probably using Hallertau or potentially Pearl or uh, something like this. You know, it's using one of these typical German noble hops. You've got that smooth earthiness in there. You've got a nice bright floral aromaticity, a little bit of grassiness as well. I'd say that overall, 
the kind of green component to this beer comes across as being quite well balanced. It doesn't lean too much towards the floral side or the grassy side of things. Um, but uh, yeah, a nice little bit of everything. I do like the German noble hops in that sense. To me, they always come across as a little bit brighter. The Czech ones tend to be a little bit more kind of spicy, whereas the Slovenian ones tend to be very, very smooth, actually. Um, but you get that nice um, brightness out of the German uh, noble hops, of course. Um, but yeah, green component of this one is quite nicely balanced. On the fruity side of things, it is kind of what you'd expect, you know, there's a little bit of a kind of peary note to it, and um, there's a wee bit of a kind of dried apricot -y quality to this one, which I certainly like, so yeah, dried apricot, a little bit of a kind of peary note, potentially a wee uh, bit of apple in there, and you know, one or two kind of um, grassy type esters to the uh, to the beer as well. So yeah, the aroma coming out of this one, I think, is, um, is very, it is very, very nice. So yeah, um, I think this works out, I think it works out very, very well in that sense. But like I say, I would probably think this beer was a Hellas or something if I smelt it blind. But as I say, I need to maybe try a few more in my box to get a proper um, impression of this um, of this style. But it certainly smells like a nice, solid German beer, this one. So I don't think you can really go wrong with this. But yeah, very crisp, white bready, leaning beer, this one, in my opinion. But I think it's about time we try this one now. So yeah, this one is the Maybach coming in at 7.1% ABV from uh, Privatbrauerei MC Wieninger from Teisendorf in southeastern uh, Germany, in the southeast of Bavaria. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skull, Prost. Yeah, you can taste that one's a little bit more boozy for sure. Um, so yeah, what I would say about this straight off is that it's kind of got the crispness of a typical kind of Hellas or you know maybe even maybe even got it's maybe even got a little touch of a kind of pilsner, uh, pilsnery type element to it. But straight away in the middle of your palate, though, you can feel that this one is a little bit more kind of boozy. You do get that alcoholic kind of flavour in the. Um, in the middle of your palate with this. So yeah, it's it's almost it's almost got the sessionability, the kind of sessionable mouthfeel uh, and things like that to it. But yeah, 7.1% booze in this, very, very easy to drink. So a bit dangerous this beer potentially. Um, but yeah, I think this one is um, it's pretty solid, actually. So yeah, thumbs up to Privat Brauerei uh, Wienia once again. Um, yeah, where do we start with this beer? Um, it certainly has the kind of crisp breadiness that you'd expect, but the booziness on this is quite, I'd say the booziness is quite noticeable in this beer. So straight away across the middle of your palate, you get that sort of very crisp, white bready sort of thing. The um, you can feel that the further you go into the aftertaste, it does give you a little bit of that kind of crisp dryness, which I think is good. If you go to either end of that um, middle third of your palate, there's a little bit of a, um, there is a little bit of a kind of more bread crusty element coming out of it too, which is quite interesting. So it's, in a lot of ways, this beer is pretty straight shooting. Um, and I suppose in a sense, you know, you can see generally about, um, about a lot of these German lagers, a lot of them are like that, that, you know, they're designed to just be nice and drinkable. They're designed to be nice kind of sessionable beers. And this one kind of fits into that category. Of course, you've got things like, you know, the Doppelbox and stuff like that have a bit more kind of complexity to them and the Weitz, uh, you know, the Weitz and Doppelbox and things. But yeah, this one is quite straight shooting and it is designed for the kind of sessionability. But um, yeah, the um, the this one is pretty damn solid. So yeah, crisp, white bready base to it. So yeah, let's focus on that middle third of your palate. You can feel that at either end of that middle third of your palate, you've got an element of a kind of bread crusty note in there. And sitting on top of that, you get a slight kind of oiliness to the beer. So if you go to the dead centre of your palate, you can feel that it's quite... Um, you do get a bit of a kind of concentrated, kind of oily, caramelly biscuit thing coming out of this one. That's right in the dead centre of your palate. But as you move further out from that, you start to get a little bit more of a kind of, as I say, you start to get a little bit more of a 
kind of grainy biscuity note coming out of this one. So I do like how that um I do like how that goes together in this one, but I'd say that this beer it does show its boozy side of things um a little bit more. I'm not sure if that's common in this style that you can feel the booziness in a sense, but yeah, when it comes to lager beers, I think that the boozier you make them, the more difficult it is to kind of cover that if you like, unless you use a little bit of you know caramel or caramunich or you know something like this. Um, so it, this this beer is definitely making me think a little bit, and this is what I always wanted with the channel was to you know try different beers, think about them, and hear what you guys think about it as well. But um, yeah, the, this one is quite interesting in that sense. So yeah, crisp white bread base, a little bit of bread crust either end of that middle third of your palate, concentrated oily brown sugars in there, and a little bit more of a uh, kind of biscuity grainy sort of thing too. But um, yeah. I would say that underneath the kind of front half of that front third of your palate, you maybe get a little, uh, underneath the front half of that middle third of your palate, sorry, you do get a little bit of a kind of, there's a slight kind of woody undertone to it, which is interesting, but I do wonder if on the back half of the middle third of your palate, maybe there's a wee bit of a kind of Pilsner malty dryness in there. Wouldn't be surprised about that, because I do think that that kind of Pilsner malty dryness comes out a wee bit more the further you go into the aftertaste, which I do like. So, yeah. So yeah, I really like how that um I really like how that goes about its business for sure. Um but yeah, multi base in this one is quite interesting. But let's go on to the back third of your palette then. So border region between front third and back third of your palette, again there's a wee bit of a kind of bready build up in there. You get a bit more of a kind of prominent bread crusty flavour, and then in the back third of your palate, I think it leans a little bit more towards that grainy side of things. Uh, on top of the um on top of the um, kind of back third of your palate, you can feel the nice kind of, there is a little bit of a yeasty element in there, which is good. Um, so you can feel that the flavor is a little bit taller on that back third of your palate. So when you come from the back of your palate, you can feel it's a little bit taller like this. It just condenses down. You've got those airy kind of bready-ish flavors uh, from the yeast there. It condenses down a little bit then in the middle third of your palate, you've got that quite condensed, the crisp bread sort of oily kind of biscuity boozy sort of thing I was talking about earlier so um yeah it gets a little bit dry in the middle of the palate in that sense as well but yeah I think that covers the malty side of this beer quite succinctly to be honest with you and um, so on to the hoppy side of things back corners of the palate you do have a nice little bit of earthiness there and I think that builds a good bridge with the slightly more boozy character of this beer and some of the kind of bread crusty grainy elements but as you move further forward there's a little bit of herbal quality um, comes out of this beer then as you push towards the front corners of the palate it's got a nice big floral um, aromaticity which I uh, which I can certainly appreciate but um, yeah around the front curve of the palate it's got a nice little bit of uh, a lighter kind of grassy type thing to it as well which I, I do enjoy but um, yeah, around the front curve of the palate, the the grassiness of this it does have a wee bit of zestiness to it as well, which is is kind of quite interesting. But yeah, one thing I'm finding with this beer is it does as your flavor your your palate gets a little bit more used to it. I do think the kind of sweet side of the biscuity notes comes out a little bit more, so that's definitely interesting. I can appreciate how that goes together. But yeah, um, going forward to the um, you know, going forward. Um, to the front third of your palate with this one. There's quite a few interesting wee things going on in there. So let's focus on that kind of fruitier side of the beer, but I do, as I say, like the kind of slight zestiness that the grassy component to this beer has. So yeah, border region between front third and middle third of your palate then. Sitting on top of, the, of that, you do get a bit of a, you get a wee bit of a bready buildup. Once again, you get a slightly more prominent bread crusty base. Then the base of that, um, the base of that kind of front third of your palate again is uh, is quite bready, but I'd say the breadiness is kind of softer there. I do miss the uh, the German bakeries. I loved the the bakeries in Germany. The bread that you got there was just beautiful. But sitting on top of that, of course, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, on the back half of that front third of your palate, you get a wee bit of a kind of dried apricot -y thing. There's definitely some pear elements to it as well. I think as you move further forward, then as you move into that front half 
of the front third of your palate. There's maybe a teeny little hint of a slightly gooseberry type thing, just very, very slight, uh, and maybe a wee bit of a kind of slightly more kind of spicy apple, and one or two kind of lemon, very slightly lemon, limey, grassy type esters coming out of it. So these are all typical things that you get from lighter, lager type beers like this, actually. But yeah, I'd say that overall, it's um, it's a kind of, I think it's a kind of peery, it's a sort of peery, spicy, apple-y kind of thing that's coming out of this one, uh, to be honest, more than anything else. But the grassy esters kind of uh, play a big role in this one too. But overall, this is quite a nice beer. As I say, this is one that's made me think a little bit. I'm not overly familiar with this Maybach with the Maybach sub-style, if you like, or the Maybach style. So I think this is something I would need to get um, used to a little bit more. It does come across as a little bit more boozy, this beer, and the beer has a bit of dryness in the flavour as a result of that. But um, yeah, I liked it. I would like to try something from, a, from you know, the slightly more malty end of the spectrum, like a Dunkel or a Doppelbock would be quite interesting to try from these guys. So who knows, maybe we'll get a couple more beers from this brewery over the, um, the next little while. But uh, yeah, I do like how this one uh, goes about its business. So thumbs up to uh, to Wieninger once again for this one. Solid beer. But yeah, on the mouthfeel then. So as you would kind of expect, this beer is quite light bodied. Um, it's not even kind of pushing towards the top end of light body. I think it's kind of right in the middle. Um, so it does have a very, lit, you know, a very kind of distinctive drinkability to it. It's got a nice bit of crispness to it, which you would want from a German lager, of course. So um, yeah. I do like that. One of the things you have to kind of say when it comes to lager beers as well is that the Czech ones tend to be a little bit more kind of yeasty and smooth, if you like, whereas the German ones are a bit kind of crisp. They're a bit more crisp in a sense. So it's worth bearing that in mind with this beer because this one is, generally speaking, quite a crisp beer. In terms of hoppy bitterness and stuff, I think we're talking about 25 IBUs with this one when you've, pardon me, a little bit more booziness to this beer. Um, yeah. I think having a wee bit more bitterness kind of counterbalances that quite well. But yeah, the malty side of things, nice smooth breadiness, a little bit of, kind of, as I say, a little bit of a booziness to the beer and a wee bit of kind of sweetness and crispness. But then you've also got just a little bit of a kind of fruity character also. But yeah, the um, the way everything goes together in this beer, I think, works, um, works really nicely. So it gets a big um, thumbs up from me, this one. Quite a boozy uh, lager beer, this one for sure. But um, yeah. I think it goes about its business quite nicely and as I said I would be curious to try something a little bit more malty from these guys next time like a Schwarzbier or a Dunkel or a Doppelbock or whatever, a, a Hefeweizen of some description could be interesting as well. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. So this one was the Maybach, 7.1% from uh, Privat Brauerei Wieninger or Privat Brauerei MC Wieninger from Teisendorf in southeastern Bavaria down in Germany. Interesting beer this one, nice to return to these guys and I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Privat Bauerlei MC Wieninger and as I say, hopefully we can return to these guys at some point soon. Slange it, skull, cheers, give me some Maybach recommendations and I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers just now.